now I'm going to give you a very whistle stop tour of the limits of knowledge. This is an open top bus tour, bus tour, uh, the like of which you've never seen. First, um, I want to introduce you to, um, I think, uh, posterity will view as the greatest philosopher of the 20th century. Um, that is, I refer, of course, to Donald Rumsfeld, the former um, uh, Defence Secretary of the United States, who uh, probably um, trying to, uh, to evade some direct questioning, said there were three kinds of knowledge. There are the known knowns, there are the things that we know that we know, and then there are the known unknowns, they're the things that we know that we don't know. In other words, we do know that there are some things that we don't know. And finally, there are also the unknown unknowns, and these are the things, these are the facts that we don't know that we don't know, but there's knowledge out there that we have no idea that it exists. Now, we all know or think we know the things that we know we know. No? First of all, here's an example. We all know or think we know that the sun is going to come up in the morning every day. Uh, and we've known this since antiquity. Um, so we can reliably state, because we've seen it every day ourselves, that uh, the sun will come up in the morning. Now, um, there probably was a time when one Aztec would say to the other, we'd have to do the human sacrifice now, Bert, um, or the uh, sun won't come up tomorrow. And the other one says, yeah, but we know the sun will always come up tomorrow. And the other one said, care to, care to miss it and see. Ah, I see the point. But we have since then sent satellites into space and we know something about the structure of the local universe. We know that the Earth revolves around the sun and that it's as sure as sure can be that the sun will come up in the morning. So that's one thing that we know we know. Although you're probably beginning to detect that even with the things that we know that we know, there are some fuzziness, there's some little boojums at the edges. Uh, another one we think we know we know is basic arithmetic. One plus one is two, two plus two equals four, and all the operations of uh, basic maths. Um, so these were always the case when I was at school and when your children were at school and those of you who are doing homeschooling will, will, will know to a nauseating degree that this is something we know we know. However, even in the basics of the arithmetic, there are little boojums at the edges, things that are unknown, things that are strain the limits of knowledge. Back in the early 20th century, the philosopher Bertrand Russell and his friend uh, Alfred North Whitehead wanted, were fascinated by the philosophy of numbers. Why are numbers? What are numbers? What is their property? And they thought that mathematics was on a very uncertain footing and wanted to pin it down. They wanted to find the substructure of mathematics, reducing everything to logic. And in their huge book called Principia Mathematica, it took them, you know, loads and loads of pages and thought just to get to prove that one plus one was two. Um, what they were trying to do was find that there's a logical structure under arithmetic. Um, uh, now, this was fine until the 1930s when a fellow called Kurt Gödel came along and he said that... Um, there are, in any mathematical system that is complete, in other words, it can, it can, ex it can express any, uh, any theorem, any view that you want, there will be some statements that you know are true, but you can't prove it. In other words, there are undecidable propositions. So um, that goes to show uh, that um, even in basic maths, there are things that you can't know that you know. I'll move on. Now, uh, time was not very long ago that everyone thought that the Earth was created in 4004 BC on one day of October at tea time. 
uh, this was uh, uh, worked out by a chap called Archbishop of Usher. He was he was the an Archbishop of Omar in Ireland. Um, but since then, we found uh, using a lot of scientific methods and geology and stratigraphy that the Earth is very very old, and there is a fossil record. Um, that the Earth is, is extremely old. So this has been shown to be the case by multiple intersecting, corroborating lines of evidence. So these are things that we know that we know. And there are lots of things I'm sure you can think of like that. However, so we do have some idea of some of the things we know we don't know. Now, this is where science works. Science is all about trying to investigate the things that we know that we don't know. Um, and here are a few of those. One is, we know that we don't know that there is something called dark matter. Or, well, we know that we know that there is something called dark matter, but we don't know what it's made of. Uh, we know, looking at the motions of stars and galaxies, that they do things that are um, incompatible uh, with the law of gravity, provided that all the matter we see is all we can see. In other words, there's a lot more matter we can't see. It's called dark matter, and we don't know what it's made of. Another thing that we know uh, we don't know is how many species there are on the planet. Now, I was in a debate yesterday about extinction, and one of the problems about extinction is we don't know how many species there are on the planet. People have tried to count this in various ways by digging up soil and sampling the microbes or rattling trees and seeing how many things fall out and extrapolating it. And you know, it, uh, estimates have varied from a million species to hundreds of millions of species. Um, we know that there are a lot of species, but we don't know how many there are. So that's something, one of the things we know that we don't know. Another thing that we know that we don't know is whether there is any life in the universe apart from uh, on the earth. A subsidiary is if there is in, in any intelligent life in the universe. Now, my son tells me that there is no intelligent life on earth because he's just waiting for the lizard people to come down and claim him for their own. And my son, the same fellow, when much younger, drew a picture, which I wish I could show you, um, of a very fed up looking Dalek um, and the caption, I'm fed up of exterminating. I want to be a celebrity chef. So uh, we don't know if there are any Daleks, let alone those who have, are fed up of exterminating and want to bake cakes instead. Um, this is something we know that we don't know. And I'm sure you can think of a lot of things. In, in fact, the whole of scientific inquiry is based on this. People look at the world or their experimental system and ask questions of it. Uh, they can do this either by collecting lots of data in an undirected way and then seeing if any patterns emerge, or they can ask a question of it, a hypothesis, and then collecting the data to test the hypothesis. Now, these are called inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning, and I can never remember which is which, and it doesn't matter because they're not mutually exclusive. But this is what scientists do, and this concerns me greatly um, because in my day job, I am a I am a senior editor of the science journal Nature, and in Nature we like to um, uh, entertain, as it were, the most cutting edge research. Uh, right at the edge of science, right at the edge of knowledge, where people are really looking into the gloom and um, uh, finding new things that nobody knew before. So what about the things we don't know we don't know? Now, before we start, we have to realise that there are things we don't know we don't know. And I say that because there is a strand of thought uh, among some scientists uh, that um, knowledge and ignorance are a zero-sum game. And the more things we know, uh, the, f the less ignorance there is. When, In other words, we're shining an ever brighter light into an ever shrinking puddle of ignorance. Au contraire, say I, I think that the more we find out, the more we realise that uh, how much we don't know. Our knowledge, our ignorance increases disproportionately to the amount of knowledge.
So, for example, if you're struggling up some hill and you see the horizon and you think that's the top of the hill and you think, goodness me, I know that's the horizon, it's the top of the hill. But when you get there, you find that there's even more hills to climb. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.